Hi, everybody. Hi. How's everybody doing? Give me the thumbs up <laughs> or the thumbs down. Hopefully not. <laughs> Hi, Roberta. I see you Hi. on there. Yep, I'm on. All right. We're going to give it uh, about three more minutes and then I'll get started. I have 31 people on right now expecting 99, <laughs> which is kind of unbelievable. But um, this, this class will be, can you all hear me okay? Like the volume's good and everything? Yeah. Okay. Um, but this class will be an overview and it won't be a lot of hands-on unless you want to jump in with me. Um, if you've got journaling supplies already or pencil and paper, you're welcome to do that. But it's mostly going to be overview and um, nature journaling supplies and tips. So it'll be fun. Um, I'll show you a lot of examples from my journals and, and we can, um, I think you'll learn a lot. I'll give you a lot of links to things and um, It'll be, it'll be fun. My classes that are coming up, um, I know some of you are already signed up for those. Um, they're going to be a lot smaller. So, you know, I'm thinking no more than 20, maybe 12. So way smaller. Um, yeah. So I'll have limits on those. But we'll, you know, I think probably 12 would be the maximum. But I want to get a feel of how this goes too. I've been doing some Facebook Lives for core watercolors. I'm a golden working artist. So um, that's given me a little bit of an idea of how um, to present these, although I haven't had a lot of um, classes where I've, that I've done on Zoom where we have a lot of back and forth. Um, I just did a class with Amy Shali Paquette the other day, and she and I are going to be offering um, a uh, feathers and foliage class where she uh, instructs on dra drawing a bird and I'll instruct on drawing um, plants. So we'll combine those two. And uh, she's also a golden working artist with golden artist colors in up in, um, which are based in upstate New York. She's in Virginia. I'm here in Montana. So um, we're going to combine our efforts on a couple classes starting in January. So let's see, we have about one more minute. I think people are gonna be joining as we go along and I just wanna welcome everyone. We're up to 41 now. So um, again, I will, I will be recording this class and it will, um, it will be posted on YouTube and I'll give you a link to it. And also I will send you um, a, a lot of the links that I will be posting so that you can easily get to um, materials and um, core watercolors and, and other materials I'm using. So it, it should be pretty easy to, to get to those. So don't worry about linking to everything within this um, class because I will follow up with, with those too. So, so we won't need to we won't need to save the chat link where they'll get will they get put no in? I'll send you all that I will be checking the chat link um, for questions so if you do have questions please write them in there rather than um, talk Bec and the, the reason why is because we have so many participants in this um, in this Zoom so I'll ask you to mute yourselves and then if you if you feel the need to speak and it's a good time, I'll unmute you to ask a question, but um, I'm gonna go with the chat because of the quantity of people that are signed up, if that's okay for all of you. I hope it is. In the all the other classes I'll be doing, which will all be a one and a half hours, just like this, you'll have an opportunity to speak and chat and so forth because the people, um, participants will be way lower than this one. But this is mostly an introduction of me and my work and, and um, tips and materials for you to get started with nature journaling and, and just to see how I do it. I've been teaching for a long time. I've been teaching since um, 2003 as a classical botanical illustrator. Again, my name's Nancy Seiler and I'm coming to you from Missoula, Montana where it's really cold outside today. <laughs> um, anyway, um, 
I've been teaching botanical illustration, classical botanical illustration in watercolor, colored pencil, pen and ink, and graphite since 2003. And in about 2006, I was asked to teach a nature journaling course for the Montana Natural History Center. And I had never done nature journaling before. And so I thought, I said yes. And I thought, well, I can figure this out. And um, I had some uh, books by Hannah Hinchman, who was a great inspiration to me, and uh, Claire Walker Leslie. And I looked at some of those books and I, I got a journal and I went out and sat under a tree up in um, the rattlesnake area here in Missoula. It's a wilderness area we have close by. And um, I sat quietly and I realized how calm I became because I'm one of these people that usually has about 10 or 12 things going on up in the air and I'm juggling everything. And I used to be pretty stressed out because I had so much going on. And I sat down and I was pretty much immediately relaxed because I began to focus on things around me and sounds and um, it became a kind of a meditation, honestly, and I became very relaxed. And so I find that nature journaling for me um, has enabled me to slow down and, and focus. Um, and uh, I just, I get so passionate about it because it has um, enabled me to find some peace in different times of my life. And I also think it's something that I can do for the rest of my life. So I'm, I'm very passionate about teaching it. And like I said, I've been teaching since uh, 2006. And um, when I did that class, I again, just got everyone outside in Ovando, Montana and spread apart so they didn't really talk to each other and get distracted. And I too sat down and I just was so focused. And what I find now when I look back at those pages in that time, um, for each of those pages I've done, I can bring myself directly back to that time. And, um, and real, I've really, um, I guess, internalized what that time was when I was drawing. And so I think that's what nature journaling can do for all of you is, is um, give you a, a place to focus and a place to slow down if you need that, a place to let go of the worries we have in the world right now, and to really um, take a very, very close look at different objects and things around you. And as I've mentioned to a lot of my students, um, you know, most people um, that take my classes, all my classes are for no experience. You know, you don't have to have any experience. You can have a lot of experience. It doesn't matter. Um, but I say, you know, if you're intimidated to by the blank page, and I get that because I was too when I started, is to um, don't look at the page, which sounds kind of counterintuitive. But when, when you look at the object you're drawing, and you don't look at your page, you will find that you're able to follow the contour of that object and get some marks on the page. And you'll find that your drawings end up being, you'll be more pleased with your drawings because you're actually observing the object rather than trying to make the object on your page look real. Um, I also have mentioned that there's no information on that white page. So if you're looking at it, you're, you're going to get frustrated because you're, you're drawing from out of your mind then instead of looking at an object and drawing it. So I'm going to show you um, some tips to do that, um, some of the materials I use, and um, I'll do a few demos using those materials. And um, yes, I will email the link. So I will be looking over in the chat. So down here at the bottom of your Zoom screen, you have a little thing that says chat and you just type in there um, over to the right on my screen anyway it says type message here and um, Liz and Bob Hammond have mentioned uh, will you email the links yes I will record this you can watch it again if you want because um, there's a lot of um, examples I'll be showing you I'm going to switch over to my desktop camera my face and a PowerPoint my screen which shows you examples because 
I realized it would be easier and clearer to show you on the screen rather than to try to find them in my journals and flip through them. So um, I have a, a slideshow that I'll go through and I will be talking about um, some of those examples. So you can see how I approach things and how I, um, I'm really into plants and you'll see that in my journal pages because I, like I said, I've taught botanical illustration. So I tend to focus on plants and landscape, not so much people and buildings. So um, if you, you know, if you like people and buildings, there, there's a lot of um, classes out there like with Danny Gregory, um, urban sketching, depends on where you live in the world. I'm fortunate um, and I love where I live because I have a lot of open space around me and I can get out and, and in the, you know, nature and quiet and draw and that's what I really like to do. So that's what this will be focused on, but I can give you some links to also other teachers that I think are really great um, for um, if you'd like to do, you know, buildings and people. But again, you'll see one person in my sketchbook, but other than that, it's mostly nature. Um, hence nature journaling. So that makes sense. Wow, we have 58 people here. So again, thank you all for uh, joining me. And um, again, I'll re be recording this and sending you links at the end. Um, I want to um, give you an overview of this class. Um, I'll show you some examples and then after that, I'll be um, showing you how to do um, a little landscape with a template and I'm going to show you in watercolor and colored pencil, watercolor pencil actually, so you get an idea of how the colors blend. I'll also be showing you a couple other tips like with dividers on measuring and um, using a water soluble pen as opposed to a um, permanent pen for drawing. Um, and there's different effects you can get with that. So um, let's see, I've got a little outline here. Um, so how do I get started? Um, I tend to go out in nature so, or somewhere and sit down. I have a Crazy Creek chair, which is a folding padded, like a thermores type chair that folds flat and is very lightweight. And I have a backpack if I go out hiking and I strap that to my backpack so I can take water and my journaling supplies, which I keep in a bag. So bag. I got this at the secondhand store up in Park City, Utah. So I'm pretty happy about that. But this, this holds all my nature journaling supplies. And this is really important because what I've found over the years is I get this urge to go out and do nature journaling and then it's like, where's my pencil? Where's my pen? Where's my paint? I, where is it? And by the time I find everything, I, I'm onto something else like doing laundry or whatever and I never get outside. So I find that for me, if I could just grab a bag and go, I'm going to do a lot more nature journaling. And um, I, you know, I love nature journaling, but I don't do it every day. I wish I had a schedule where I did every day because I think it would be a great meditation for me to do every day, but I do it as much as I can. So, you know, don't get frustrated with yourself if you don't go out every day or even once a week or once a month to do it, but just know that you can and that you can grab this bag and go and you're free to do it whenever you want. The other thing I want to mention is your journal is your own. You don't have to show it to anybody. So, this is one of my journals. I use a Moleskin journal and show you. I'm going to go ahead and jump into um, to my desktop here so I can show you the, my, some of my supplies as we go forward. And I see that um, a few people have mentioned if there can be a live closed captioning. Um, I can look into that for my future um, classes. I don't, I'm sorry, but I don't know how to do that right now. I think my slideshow has some notes in it um, that will show up possibly. But again, I'm just getting going with all of this finally after 
um, feel, finally feeling comfortable about going online and teaching after teaching in person for so many years. So um, I'll see if I can figure that out. All right, so here are, here are some of my supplies. So this is a, a moleskin journal. And the reason I like, let me pull this up a little bit. The reason I like a moleskin journal is because I, it's, this is a watercolor notebook. And you can hear the page, how stiff that paper is. And the reason I like this rather than a sketchbook for water media is because if you paint in a sketchbook, you are going to um, have wrinkled paper um, from the water coming through. So in this, in this sketchbook, I can paint on both sides of the paper. So I just tend to start in the front and I've got you know, my name in here and I usually put the date when I start the sketchbook because I have a number of them. I usually leave a blank page. I don't know why. I think I just think I might want to go back and do a title page sometime. But then I start just whatever um, I see. I just, something inspires me, I, I draw it. So you can go all the way across the Moleskine because it's flat in the middle. And you can do vertical um, journaling. Like I was in Grand Canyon and I did a, a, long, a high, let me show you, I think I've got that handy here. Here it is. So you can do a vertical, nice vertical. If something's very vertical, you can paint the whole page. But I wanted to emphasize that Moleskine is very, flat in the middle so you can go right across the what they call the gutter or the fold in the middle here so um so anyway i have a journal moleskin journal and then i like a just taking a mechanical pencil out i used to take a um like a graphite pencil and a an eraser and also a pencil sharpener and then I realized I don't need all that all I need is a mechanical pencil it's got an eraser on the top you can sharpen it by just turning it these are very inexpensive so um, I use that and then I like having a brush you only need one brush and the one I would recommend would be a Princeton number eight round and again these are all linked I'm on, on my materials and I'll put that link in now so you can go there if you'd like to. I think you can sometimes open up another window while you're watching a Zoom. I know I do that if I get, um, not if I get bored, that's not a good thing to say, but I just put the link in there. Um, so I do like these, this brush, number eight round. If you spend, um, a few dollars, these aren't very expensive, but if you can get a, um, I'm just putting some water on this, if you can get a brush that has a nice point, like so, um, you want the brush to come to a point and be able to hold enough water in the belly of the brush, which is right here, so you can get a nice um, full brush of paint say if you were doing a sky or something like that, you could fill it up with quite a bit of paint and still put the brush down to a point and make some fine details. So um, anyway, I will post again, I'll post all these links. I will send you all these links uh, through an email as well as a recording. So you can um, take a look at that afterwards if you miss anything or if I miss anything, it'll be in the links. So a number eight round brush. I, I also like um, Silver Silk 88, number eight round. You can see that's made by Silver Brush and that's on my link page. And the link is um, in the chat and it says nancyseiler.com workshops art materials. All right. All right, so, and the other brush I like is a three quarter inch flat brush. Looks like this, about three quarters of an inch wide. 
This is not, this is optional. It's a wash brush. This is a way you can get a lot of um, paint on the paper and do a nice long wash, like a sky or something like that. I do put an, a kneaded eraser in my journal. Sorry, in my journal bag. A kneaded eraser is something I've used for years and years and years <laughs> um, with drawing. And you just knead it like this and it cleans itself. And the reason I have it in a Ziploc bag is because I don't want it to pick up a lot of dirt and so forth out when I'm outside. Um, and plus, I don't want it to pick up graphite or, or things like that, that in my journaling bag. So I have a, a, a kneaded eraser because that's an easy way to erase the whole page quickly. Let's say you've done a pencil drawing underneath. I might as well open it to something here so it's more interesting. But say um, you, you sketch these out. I just dove into this with a pen because I, I just like doing that. But say you sketched all these out and um, you, you wanted to erase the page quickly, this will erase the whole page rather than taking this tiny eraser and trying to erase the whole page. So I tend to have a um, kneaded eraser in my bag, in a Ziploc bag. And then um, as far as uh, permanent, these are permanent pens. So this is a Micron. Pigma Micron Pen. It's made by Sakura, S-A-K-U-R-A. And again, these links I'll give you. Um, they're on my website materials page under workshops. But the Micron Zero One I really like because it's got a nice fine point. Hard to focus. <laughs> it's the way it is with online classes. Um, the other one I like to put in there, this is optional, this is a Pigma brush, Micron, made by the same company, but it's a brush, so um, it will, it'll draw fine lines, and then it'll draw thick lines. So if I want to fill something in quickly, something very dark, I can use this little Pigma brush pen. So those are wonderful. Um, the paint I really like is the Core Mini. And this is great for journaling. Um, as I mentioned earlier in, in this uh, class, I am a golden working artist. And golden uh, makes acrylic paint as well as core watercolors. And these watercolors are different than any other watercolor on the market because they're they're really vibrant. Uh, the binder is flexible. It's a synthetic binder, so it doesn't yellow. The binder is called Aquazol. And all the other watercolors on the market, um, the binders are usually made with um, gum arabic or honey, something like that. Um, gum arabic can crack over time if it's put on very thickly. This won't crack, it's flexible. Aquazol um, is, is used in art conservation. So if, um, say, the Met in New York wants to repair a painting, they may be using Aquazol as a binder to hold the pigment onto a painting so that in 100 years from now, that can be removed and replaced with something better for conservators. So this is a very stable binder. And, um, and I just, and other than that, you know, I just love, look how small this is. I can put it in my back pocket. I can put it in my purse. It's got a mixing well here on the side. Um, these are silicone wells here, metal mixing wells here. And then I have a, there's an article that I'll link to, but I usually have, um, this is from the article. I'll put that in here too. So the link I just put up is an article about the Core Mini. And this image is actually in the article. And what I did was I copied it and printed it out on a photo, photo paper, and then I laminated it. And so I put this in the back of my journal 
in this pocket. There's a pocket in the back where I can put tracing paper and swatches and this template and so forth. And um, I can move the whole shebang in the back from journal to journal as I fill up journals. So I don't have to keep putting, like painting a whole swatch series in one journal. I can just move it onto the next. So I put that in the back of my journal. Um, here, here, I just want to show you this. This is a little mixing chart for the core mini. So it has 12 colors, as you can see, but it has two yellows, two reds, two blues. And, and those are gonna be um, biased towards orange, green, and purple, which are secondary colors or biased away. I do have a blog on my website and these things, a lot of images are uploaded on my blog and you can go in and take a look at that. So if you go to nancyseiler.com and just go to the blog, you can scroll down through a lot of images that I've already scanned and put on there. This is, these are the paints that are in this kit. I just wanted to paint them out to show you what they look like. So you can see that the two primaries, the larger boxes are here. And then you've got an orange, a purple and a green for secondary colors already mixed. And then you've got some earth colors and a Payne's gray, which is a great neutral, kind of a bluish neutral. So I really do like that. Now, um, one thing I wanted to mention is that you can contact help at goldenpaints.com and get these um, samples of core dot cards, they're called, for free. So this is what I just posted um, on here. Let's see. Nancy, your postings are not, your links aren't coming up under the chat room. Oh, well maybe they're um, delayed. Again, I will send them again later. So I'm sorry if, um, oh, I think, sorry. Everyone, I see what's happening. Thank you for telling me that. Someone had texted me privately and I was responding to them. I'm so sorry. Okay, so here are the links. Are you seeing those? I've got the core mini half pan. Yes, those are coming up. Okay, good, I'm sorry. It looks like, um, all right, gotcha. Okay, copy, here we go. So here is the help at Golden Paints. This is an, um, an email. And if you want to contact Golden, you can get a dot card like this. And what this is, is it's a laminated card. So these are actually great for reusing in my um, journal. I just can tuck these in the back too and refill these dots. Um, but these are six colors of the core colors. And you can actually paint right on this card. This is Fabriano, um, 140 pound cold press watercolor paper, a really nice water paper, color paper that comes with this. I would keep this little sheet to keep the paint from getting anywhere. But they make two of these and you can, requ you can request both of them. And there's, so you'd have 12 different colors to try out. And again, you just need to contact help at goldenpaints.com. And they can um, mail them in the US. And if you're international, just tell them you, where you live and they will make sure you get one through sales. I checked on that beforehand. So this, for instance, this is the little wheel from the free dot card here. This is uh, six colors and you can see the mixtures you can get with these. And so these are great, you know, if you don't want to invest in a paint set right away, um, I think you can get the core mini at blick.com for $60. And that, that, um, that kit is gonna last you a really, I mean, it's gonna last you the rest of your life because what you can do is refill the pans. There are half pans in there if you use up, say, a lot of yellow or something. So I've been using mine for about four years now and it's barely gone down. It's really strong paint, really strong pigment. So that's one of the 
dot cards, the other one looks like this. And that's the wheel for the other one. You can see how vibrant that is in these beautiful secondary colors. And the outer um, triangles are mixtures going even farther away by mixing the two next to each other here. So um, I can share this image, these images of my mixes too, if you'd like. All right, um, let me go through the rest of my examples. Um, I have a little Nalgene bottle full of water. It's stained on the outside. It's actually clean water in there, but I like Nalgene because it will not leak and it fits right in my bag. Um, this is a great tip that someone, I don't remember who it was, but some nature journaling person showed me years ago. You take an old sock and you can just put it on your wrist instead of having, um, um, you know, paper towels or so forth. Although I do like taking a paper towel or two in my bag out in the field because I, I can dab my paintings. So this is great. This is an old athletic sock. That's, it's been washed a few times, but it's stained from the pigment. Um, and some optional supplies. This is something I think is super fun. This is a pin card. And how I made this was, if you go to the back of the Moleskine, Moleskine, journal, Moleskine journal, there's a page that's not watercolor paper. This is watercolor, this is not. And I, I would trim it with an X-Acto knife, just trim it out. And then what this is, is a grid. And I think you can see that based on the dots. But all these dots here are actually holes that I made with a, um, a tack. I made a hole all the way through. First, I gridded it out. So three squares down, four squares across. And, and I took a ruler and I sketched it all out. And then I put a push pin through here through each hole. So, and, and how that works is, say I want to um, do a, a, say I have a long landscape I want to do. I can choose these three, these um, squares right here, and I can push my pencil through here and make some dots. You can see the dots on my paper, maybe, hopefully. Yeah, there they are. And then I take a straight edge and just use this paper here. White paper tends to not focus very well but I can just connect these dots like so. So this is a tip. <laughs> and then I have a, a long uh, landscape here that is actually in, in the same proportion as this whole spread, um, basic proportion. So if this was blown up, it would be this size. And so I can, I can sketch out a thumbnail, what they call a thumbnail of a landscape, and take a look at it, test it out, and then I could transfer it to the whole spread, or I could just leave it as it is and just do a, a quick sketch. I do a lot of those little landscapes like that, and I will show you in some examples coming up here. Um, the other uh, optional supplies I have is one is a white gel pen. It's called a Uniball Signo. This one's called Broad, although it's kind of a fine point. And this is like a gel pen. And I think, may, hopefully you've all seen gel pens. This one's called Jelly Roll. And they're basically just white pens that will block out something in, it, that's a black or darker color in your journal. You can see how in this example, it just added some white. And that's a quick way to add a highlight back into your drawing if you need to. Last thing I wanna do is show you an optional, um, a couple optional things. This is a pilot razor point. Let's get this down here so I can focus. This is a pilot razor point. And, and I love this little pen. This is water soluble. So it's gonna smear if you put 
water over this pen. And um, let me show you what I mean on that. So say I'm drawing some leaves or something. And then if I go in and I use a brush with water, I can go in and it'll bleed and kind of shade it really quick. You can see that. So that's an option. I'll show you some examples from that coming up. Um, and the other thing I wanted to mention is sometimes people use a Niji water brush, and that's what this is. And it's a capsule that holds water, so you don't have to take water out into the field. And you can just use a Niji water brush to paint with. Let me get a little paint on here. So that's an easy way to paint as well without taking water and a brush. Um, I like water and a brush, so that's what I use. And then you just squeeze it to clean it. And water squirts out of it and it cleans the brush. So that's an option as well. Um, one other thing for those of you that don't like watercolor for whatever reason, um, I use uh, Derwent watercolor pencils as well. And this, these are swatch sheets for my watercolor pencils. So I've got them in a fold out roll. Um, this is made by actually Niji roll. I think these are like five or six dollars. Um, I live in Montana, so I don't have a great art material store here. So I have to go online for a lot of my things. Um, so Niji roll is what these are. And I have two of these. And then I've just gone in, these are Derwent watercolor pencils, and I've gone in and painted the names larger with acrylics. So I don't have to look so closely and figure out what the, what the colors are printed on the, on the pencil. So I've gone in and painted them with acrylics so I can find them easier. But I have, I have two of those rolls because I have more pencils that fit into one. And then I always use the Niji brush with my watercolor pencils because it's easy to, easy to um, blend the pencils. All right, let me see on your questions where to get the paint set. Um, yeah, um, blick.com. Let's see, are you sharing my links? Everyone's gotten my links so far. Um, the Moleskine paper in the journal is um, probably a 140 pound cold press as well. It's a watercolor notebook, Moleskine. And the pens. Um, the pens, that, as far as I know, don't have a refill. Um, Micron pens, they will um, dry out eventually, or they could start leaking, especially if you take them on a plane. The altitude change can start, um, can somehow, somehow make the pressure in that pen start to leak. So some, um, you know, when you pull out those pens to draw with them, the microns, make sure they're not, there isn't a bunch of um, ink coming out around the, the, the base of the pen right here. Because sometimes, actually right in here is what it would come out. Sometimes some ink will start leaking here and I just have to throw them away at that point. But I still love Micron a, a lot because I can get a double lot five, a very thin pen. And those, these pens go up to 01, 02, I think all the way to 08 for thicker pens. So you can, you know, if you like to draw, have a thicker line, you can get thicker ones. I think they come in a set too. Um, again, my materials links are on my website, nancyseiler.com. Go to workshops and then under that it's materials. I see someone has a, a note about that. So let me switch over to my um, PowerPoint. And let's see. All right. Mm -hmm. 
slideshow. Okay. Everyone see that okay? Give me a thum thumbs up if you can there. <laughs> Thank you. All right. So I'm just going to go through and show you some of my um, examples of my own journal. And um, I'll talk about them. There's a, there's a number of them, but I won't spend a ton of time on each of them because I want to get to the demos. But I, I do want to show you um, some examples here. So this is a, a few um, journaling pieces, the core mini. And sometimes I can mount my, my watercolors from my journal onto a board. And, um, and that's done, you know, um, with, through using golden soft gel, which is up in the upper left corner. And it's um, brushed on the back of the watercolor, brushed on the board you see in the lower left corner. And then it's um, pressed onto that board and cut out. You do have to varnish these with um, at least four coats of varnish, um, two coats of gloss varnish, golden gloss varnish, and two coats of matte varnish. And that'll keep your watercolors bright and still make them look matte like a watercolor would. But that's something I'll go in, into in later classes. I don't want to get too involved in other things here. Um, and so when you're just getting started out, this is a page I wanted to show you because it's very simple. So, you know, a lot of my pages are more complicated, but I just wanted to show you that if you're intimidated by the blank page, just start with something very simple, just a part of a plant or part of a seed or something very, um, that's not like a whole plant. So just do a little study. And then, you know, I'm a botanical illustrator, so this is a more elaborate page showing parts of a plant. This is a Peruvian lily. And these are in the, um, usually you can find them in a grocery store. They're pretty popular plants and they last a really long time. So I use these a lot when I'm teaching. Here's another page showing um, that. Now this, this page is done with watercolor pencils, these two pages I just showed you. Um, and you can see how nicely these watercolors blend. And that was just blended with a Niji brush. And again, the Micron, Micron um, pen is a black line. And that's um, permanent pen. You don't want to be using the Pilot Razor Point and putting water over it because it'll get, it'll smear. This is the Micron pen. It does not smear with watercolor or water over it. This is a, a recent drawing. Um, I like to draw little pieces and parts of things when I'm out in the woods because um, depending on time, I'm not starting a big drawing. I can just start one little part and then come back to it. And then what I like to do later is add notes um, like rose hip or um, I can't tell what that says because it's covered up by something on my desktop, but you know, I can add to it and I can get a field guide and add to it. So um, I'm going to be doing a class on event mapping where we use field guides to add to things. And if you draw something, take time and draw something, um, you're going to be able to go to a field guide and add to it. So you don't have to do it all out in the field. And it's really fascinating to look something up and add some information to it. These were drawn from specimens. So right now it's the frozen north up here in Montana, so I can go to the Natural History Center and uh, take a look at specimens and pull those out and draw from specimens or something like that. Um, this is a, a page I did when I was camping. And I like to add, you know, this is the cabin we all stayed in and, and who was with me. And when I start a page, I like to just write the date and where I am. I'm a graphic designer as well, so I tend to do things with lettering, and I'll be going through some of those things. Um, I have a class coming up in the next couple of weeks on lettering, and showing you how I do some of these some of these things. Sorry, like this. This is a study of a of a cottonwood branch. I think in the fall because of the seeds here. And I'm not a botanist. I'm a botanical illustrator, but I'm not a botanist. So. I, I can teach botanical illustration because I, um, am a, I observe very closely. Um, if you draw what you see, then it works pretty well for, 
for botanical illustration, like don't add a leaf if it's not there sort of thing. So this again is watercolor pencil and um, micron pen in the black area. These are some little drawings that I mounted on those boards I was showing you. And this was a um, sitting in one spot up on the side of a hill and just drawing what was around me in that spot. And it's, there's no better way to spend a day in my opinion is, is to sit down in the wild, wild flowers in the spring and draw what's around me and just look really closely. And again, I added a lot of this information when I got back home in the black because I, I drew the plants. Um, one thing that's nice to have is a, some sort of camera. If you've got an um, a iPhone or something that has a camera, what I tend to do is um, photograph the plant. And um, when I get home, I can add color or look at the plant closely. I'll take a, a photo of the plant. Um, I don't like to pick the plants because they're wildflowers and I want them to reproduce. So I don't want to be taking those seeds out of the, out of the field. Um, but I can take a photo and lay, lay my book, my white book behind the plant to isolate the background and take a photo of it. Um, it's good to, if you're drawing a plant, is to take a, a white board, like a little foam core board out to the field and place it behind the plant you're drawing to isolate the background. So um, it will make it a lot easier to draw if you have, if you're drawing something on a white background. Here's another example. These were all done last year. <clears throat> I don't know why that keeps jumping back. Here's another one. Um, I, did, I was out a number of days in a row doing this. And again, these were all mounted on the boards. And then this is um, being in a place and then observing again, lots of things around me um, and just adding it to the page as I go. I was pretty excited to find this grass of Parnassus, which is a really beautiful wildflower um, found in Montana and many other places. So, and again, this is kind of an event map kind of thing where it's a, I, what I call a walking meditation. Um, I have my journal in my hand. I'm walking along. I'm noticing things, stopping, sketching them in with my black pen. I'm not adding much to it at that point as far as color because I don't want to be juggling color and pens and pencils and so forth. So I just usually use my journal and my black micron pen, walk along, make the notes, draw the little cartoons. They don't have to be anything, you know, look at this. I don't even know what that is. I think it's a chick. Yeah. So, but just to do a little cartoon um, and later you can go home or add notes to it um, and expand on your page. You can even do a list of things that you see and you don't have to draw everything. You know, I even saw the moon that day, which was kind of fun. Again, another event mapping, um, walking next to the creek. You know, it doesn't need to be anything fancy, but noticing these things is what's so fun with nature journaling. Some other examples, this one's with uh, watercolor pencils, and this is a still life of one, two, three, four different plants. This is a landscape. Um, I had time to sit and draw and paint a landscape. This is with core watercolors. And this is a full page illustration, as is this. This is vertical. Obviously, the last one was horizontal. And I'll take a look at questions. I can't see them right now, but I will take a look as soon as the slideshow's over here. Um, this was another little nature journaling piece with uh, core watercolors and uh, micron pen. You can see how beautiful the watercolors are up at the top in the sky, that paints gray. And then just painting wet into wet and letting those, those uh, colors bleed. So, you know, sometimes I'll put dots in down at the bottom. Can you see my cursor? Give me a thumbs up if you can see my cursor. Can you? Okay, great. So down here, you can see dots, and sometimes I'll just put dots in to remind me that there's a strong shadow or a color change. 
Um, a lot of times I'll put dots up in the mountains or uh, they're not here, but a lot of times I'll do that before I commit to a, um, a black line. So I'll use dots a lot of the time with that. This is again using one of those, um, those templates for a landscape. And then I like to pop things up out of the square sometimes to show more depth. So it doesn't have to be contained right in the box, but um, you can do that. Let's see. And again, a couple more examples of little landscapes. Uh, I'm doing a class on little landscapes too. This is wa um, watercolor pencil. And you can see if you scribble in the pencil and then add water, you can do it all in one go. Um, put in the colors and then add water over them. So it's pretty quick to, to do that. These are done the same way. A little black and white pencil sketch down here. Um, again, going to the Natural History Center and uh, drawing from an actual specimen. This is a lynx skull, the, the top and the bottom. And there's a, a trick with this too. Um, I have tracing paper I take with me sometimes and you can draw half of the skull. You can work on a nice line drawing of half the skull, draw a line down the middle, and then flip the tracing paper over and trace the other side here. So that's what I did. I only drew one half. That's why it's so, so perfect and symmetrical. And you can do that with symmetrical items, sorry. Um, you can draw one side and trace the other side here and then add different aspects that might be, you know, this, this point's a little bit different than this one. You can, uh, but that's a way to draw something um, symmetrical. Say it's an orchid or a skull you, or a, um, an insect or a butterfly. There's ways to do, to draw things, to make them symmetrical. And I took that same tracing and I trace the outer portion over here and then flipped the skull over and then filled in the backside. So uh, that's a great tip for drawing things that are symmetrical. This is done just in colored pencil. Sometimes I will want to spend a little more time on something than then a nature journaling piece. This one um, you may have seen in the beginning. This is another one that's mounted on wood and, and varnished. Let me go back to that one. Um, this one, I took photos and then I drew when I was at home. Um, and then I had a field guide and then I added a lot of things, uh, observations of, that I had when I was there. The date, that's always a great way to start a journal page is with the date and the weather and sounds you might hear. Um, and then I drew this in and then I went and looked up Borage family and the Latin name for it, the common name, Alpine Forget-Me-Not. That was a beautiful plant, tiny little plant. And again, um, this is a full page uh, done in Encinitas. I go down to California not this year, not next year, I mean, but usually in the winter, I'll head down there for three months and teach for Golden in, in San Diego. Some of you may, may be on from San Diego, um, but because uh, I sent you information on this. Um, this, was, this is a fun thing to do when you have, um, say you go on a trip and you don't really have time to draw that much, but I, what I did here was I was in Saugatuck, Michigan for about a week, and I just jotted things down in my journal, I think most nights, of things that happened that day, and I just created a page over a week because I, I didn't want to take a lot of time and make specific pages as I went along. Now, this example shows using a pilot razor point, as I showed you in the beginning, and these were drawn um, just with the pilot razor point and then water was added later to blend. So that was very quick. And uh, this is seeds and pods that were already dried and I just, um, just wanted to do some studies. So that was a quick way to, to do it. And again, this is the pilot is water soluble. So you don't wanna use that if you're adding color, it's gonna muddy it up. 
And this one um, shows, I wanted to show you this example because these white lines are done with the jelly pen to add highlights um, later. So that's a quick way to add some highlights. And a, a few more examples with watercolor pencils. These are watercolor pencils. And you can add a lot of writing on your page if you feel like. Um, this was a class I did with uh, Peggy Christian here in Missoula. Oops. And then the last one is my person, my only person here of Harriet doing some drawing in a botanical illustration class. Um, so let me um, go back to my other camera and see if you have any questions. Was that helpful so far? Okay, let's see. Do I always draw with permanent ink or do I sketch with a pencil and go over? Um, sometimes I go right with the ink because I just want to challenge myself, usually with a plant. I just want to, you know, go for it. But because I'm also, I'm kind of impatient <laughs> personality. So I like to just get it in there. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll take a pencil and sketch it out. Definitely do that with landscapes and so forth when I um, want to make sure I get certain aspects of the view in. And so I will sketch it out in pencil and then I'll ink it and then I'll erase using that kneaded eraser. I'll erase all the pencil because if you put watercolor over the pencil, it's, you're not going to be able to get rid of the pencil lines. So you definitely want to erase the pencil lines if you're using ink. Um, that honey, um, hummingbird you saw, that was, I did that uh, class recently with Amy Shawley Paquette um, and followed along with her because I wanted to understand how she taught before we did a class together. I knew she's, She's a really good teacher. That's why I want to teach with her. But um, I wanted to follow along with her. So I just um, used watercolor in that one. And uh, I'd sketch that out in pencil beforehand for sure. Something, you know, that's complicated like a hummingbird. <laughs> Let's see. Um, oh, good. London from Sonia. Thank you. Yeah, get out in the park in London and do some journaling. Let's see, do I design my layouts in the field before I start sketching or do they evolve? Um, you know, what I usually do, um, I have a composition class coming up, um, but what I usually do is I'll be walking along and I'll see a plant, for instance, that I really like, um, like a twin flower plant. And I'm saying that because I have a page with a twin flower on it or a paintbrush. And what I'll do is I'll make that the main, um, drawing on the page. And then I'll take time and I'll add notes about the texture of the plant. You know, it's really hard to paint texture so you can describe texture, um, especially in a journal. If you're not spending hours and hours like you would in a botanical illustration, for instance, you know, painting texture, then it's great to just describe the texture on the side. Um, so I might start with, um, usually at where I, how I start my page, the composition wise is um, in most cases, I'll just put the location up in the up in the upper left corner usually and then talk about the weather, the sounds I hear, where I am, who I might be with, some things I want to remember about the day and where I am. And then I will think, okay, what, what do I want my main um, focus to be on the page? And it might be that plant that I really like. And then I'll make that one more of the feature. And then as I find things, I'll see how they fit in around that main drawing. So I build as I go a lot of the time, or I may have a vision of what I want to see on that page um, before I start. And then I'll just have that in my head or I'll sketch it out. But everybody works differently. And in a nature journal, it's all okay. So just experiment and see how it goes with different processes. And then if you don't like it, just turn the page and try it again. And, and I think, you know, as you start drawing, you'll, you'll see how you improve over time. But um, don't be hard on yourself. Just, just, it's a process of observing. It's not really the process of drawing. It's a process of observing. And the drawing and writing is what's going to really um, help you uh, remember and um, kind of internalize what you're putting on that page. It's the observation. So 
um, don't be discouraged. Just keep keep trying. Um, let's see. Very interested. <laughs> uh, I'm just reading some um, some notes here. Hi, Joel and Sandy. They're they're from Fallbrook and they've taken some of my classes in California. So it's great to see them on here. Um, all right, and let's see. Okay. You know, um, if you miss, someone said here, I miss the plants where I live. You can get online. I mean, we're so lucky we have this online information and ability to see each other <laughs> through online classes. Hi. <laughs> Hi, everybody. <laughs> um, so, you know, you can get online and, and find an image you like. I mean, don't publish these, but you can draw from an image. You don't want to, you know, be drawing from an image and then selling it don't do that do, draw from your own photos but you know if you find a plant you like online and you want to test it out in your journal um draw from your screen or draw from photos you take with your iphone and and a lot of times i will um you know in the winter and i'm teaching nature journaling classes live i used to do this a lot is i'll print out um a photograph you know this is what i'm going to work from from my little demo here have a half an hour um but i'll just print out a photograph and i'll draw from the photograph and you know when i first started doing these classes i thought oh i don't know if people are going to like this or inside they're not you know outside nature journaling but it was fun just to sit and draw even though it was from a photograph in practice and um so you can print out photographs and draw from them um let's see yes just to uh, confirm here i will be um, sorry, just a second. Uh oh. Just a minute, I messed something up. Okay. So, um, just to confirm, I will be uh, sending you all an email through um, Eventbrite after this that has a link to the recording, which is a private. Um, I might make it public so it's easier to access, but um, a, a recording of this class, as well as I will send you a attachment that has all the links on them and what they are. So you can look things up and, um, you know, you can email me with a question if you want to. From my website, nancyseiler.com, there's a contact page and you can email me a question if I don't have it in the link, for instance. Um, so let me show you here. I think I put this on here. Oh yeah. So, um, hmm. well, I'll get these links on here. I've got this private, um, I'm not going to be able to share a link right now until I figure that out. Okay, so Sally Ann, if I pay for a class, we have to miss live, then I, maybe I could still access video and links. Yes, so all the classes I'm posting, I'm going to record. And I will send a link out after it's finished. And it will be available for a specific amount of time so that you can watch it if you miss the class. So don't feel like you're going to miss out if you miss the live class. But what all these classes are coming up are broken out into topics so it's not overwhelming so i'm not like taking you um, virtually outside and saying draw this whole landscape you're going you're not going to be overwhelmed like that we're going to be um, talking about composition and lettering and observation and leaves and um, clouds for instance or um, mountain landscape or something like that so they're all going to be broken up so that um, you aren't overwhelmed and that you can build your practice and in short classes so these are only an hour and a half so it's um it's i think it's going to be more manageable more digestible to build it up so over the next 12 weeks i'll have every sunday at this time 2 to 3 30 mountain time i'll have um, some sort of class to show you um, specific tips to help you build your journal pages in a in a um in a way that's going to be easy 
to understand and digest. So um, yeah, I will send, I guess all my events are through Eventbrite. Um, and everyone publicly, yeah, I'm trying to, anyway, I can't send the link right now. So I'll send them at the end. Um, let's see. All right, so let's go back to my desktop and I am going to show you a few demos. Um, you know, and you can follow along if you'd like, um, but I'm going to show you how to make a, um, a small template and do a little landscape. I'm gonna show you a little bit about watercolors and, and how to build up watercolors. And we'll do all that in the next 20 minutes. So nothing too, you know, um, difficult, but something where you can at least see the process a little bit. So let's see. Yes, yeah, so all the, all the um, materials are available at, Bl at Blick. If you go to my website, um, oh, here we go, I figured it out finally. If you go to my website, um, I'm gonna put that link up here one more time. This is the link for materials. I just posted that. Um, here is the link the link, sorry, for Eventbrite for all my classes coming up. That's the second link. The th third link here is a link to the um, joint class that I'm teaching with Amy Shawley. You'll see it says www.amyshawleypaquette.com. That is the feathers and foliage class. That's a four hour class with a a break in between the two hours, uh, doing birds, a break, and then plants into one painting. So that's being taught with Amy Shawley in January, and you need to go there to um, um, register for that class specifically. All the other ones I'm teaching are at my Eventbrite link um, that you see there. Let's see if I've got them all on here. Um, and do one more. This is the main link for my website. That's the last link you, you see on there. And uh, that will have examples of all my work and contact form if you want to mail me a question and so forth. Um, yeah, just let me know if you have any questions. I know I'm giving you a lot of information. I hope it's worth your time. <laughs> but I, would, I just wanted to... Um, you know, I wanted to give you just an overview of how I worked and the materials I used and, and to encourage you that it's very accessible and for anyone to do nature journaling and, and you can be a complete novice and get a lot of enjoyment out of it. So let me show you a couple um, uh, demos real quick before we end. Okay. I gotta figure out how to get to my other, okay, here it is. <laughs> this will get easier as I do more. Let's see, okay. All right, so. All right. So um, I think what I'm gonna do is show you this little landscape. Um, I know that some of you on here, Roberta has done this a few times. I see you, Roberta. Roberta is one of my star students. She's uh, taken a lot of classes with me and her journals are, have just expanded and improved. And it's just beautiful to watch her uh, draw and grow. So um, she's done this before. So sorry, Roberta, it's a, it's a, um, it's a one you've already done anyway. So a template can also be had with a business card. This is my business card. I'm a painter too, so that's one of my paintings. But what I do is for a little landscape, you can use a, you know, I wouldn't take your credit card out in the field, but you can use any kind of card you have and trace it. Like so. 
And I'm actually going to do one right below it because I want to show you watercolor and watercolor pencils. So I'm just taking my Micron pen, again, which is, doesn't bleed, and bring this down a little bit so you can see it. This is a photo that I took um, in one of our open spaces. And this is a hike I've taken many times. Um, but I just really like the simplicity of it. And you know, it's nice to have a focal point of these trees. Um, and then this is, you know, this landscape is a third sky and two thirds land, which is kind of a composition. It's not really, I mean, I don't like rules. I like to break rules, but, um, but it's, it helps you, you know, with composition off the bat to think about sketching these things out um, with pencil first. And I'm constantly, when I'm sketching, I'm constantly looking, you know, like I'm, I'm noticing that this is about a, a little less than a third of the way over this trail. And I'm just gonna sketch that in. Um, and then I've got some trees here. And I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on it, but I want to notice that the trees overlap the back, this hill in the back. So I'm just going to sketch in a couple trees there. I'm also going to do the same thing down here because I want to show you the same drawing um, in watercolor pencil and watercolor. Might be a little different, <laughs> but it'll be similar. Okay, so I've got two sketches drawn in. I drew them kind of lightly. Um, what I'm gonna do now is ink it in. So I'm gonna keep looking at my um, photograph or your landscape, just always look, always look back at it. Don't always look at your journal because remember, there's no information on the page. It's all out in front of you. And then, you know, sometimes I said I could, I put dots behind things where I don't have a line going. I don't wanna draw a hard line all the way through, I might put dots. So for instance, in this one, if I was drawing this background and I didn't want to draw all the way through the trees, I would draw some dots. Like so, you can kind of see that. Sorry, my camera went a little crazy there. Um, and then again, like this isn't a hard line either, so I might draw dots for this path, just so I remember where it is before I erase everything. And that's not going to be a hard line for your painting. Okay, so I've got my little drawings in there, kind of quick, but I don't want to spend too much time on it. Okay, now the next thing to do is grab your kneaded eraser and erase your pencil lines. And with the Micron pen, you do wanna make sure that it dries before you erase it. So you can see my pencil lines are there, my ink lines, it's pretty rough. That's just a demo, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and use my kneaded eraser and that quickly erases all the pencil lines. So those are gone now but I have an indication here of dots, just showing where those pads are, but I don't want those to be really dark, so that's why I made them dots. Okay, um, now I'm gonna get my water out 
and I'm gonna put my water over here to the right because I know myself. Oh, I wanted to show you one more thing. Um, some other options I have in my journal, I'm just backing up a little bit. Magnifying glass, great for looking closely. Sorry, I'm just doing a little aside here. So, you know, you can get a better look at things with a magnifying glass. And then the last thing, these are other options in the journal, and then I'll get back to this demo. But dividers, this is an option. So what you do is you can measure something and then transfer it to your journal, meaning you can do a couple tick marks. That gives you the width. You can see those dots, hopefully, there. And then dividers to show the height. I'm just going from the where the stem attaches to the leaf. I'm going to put those dots in. And then the length of the stem from that dot down. And so then you can fill in the leaf and it'll be the right size. So I'll come back to that in a minute, but I wanted to show you that before. I wanted to get a little indication on my paper before I forgot to show you when I'm done with this. So let's see, okay, I have a few more minutes here. So what I'm gonna do first, I'm gonna do watercolor on top. So this is watercolor. And this is watercolor pencil. And this is Derwent watercolor pencil. I love those. They're called Derwent Ink Tents. Oh, okay, that instrument is called a divider. Yeah, thanks, Sonia. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and do the sky in watercolor. And so what I'm going to do is add just clear water up here in the sky. And I'm going around my pen, or my pen lines of those trees, even though I could actually just go right over them. That'll make it easier because they're much darker than the sky. So it doesn't matter. And then I'm going to go ahead and add a little, uh, let me see if I can get all these in the picture here. So what I'm doing is adding um, a little Payne's Gray and then a little bit of ultramarine blue and some phthalo blue here. And then I'm just gonna just dab that in and let it move on its own. Might be a little darker over there. And that'll dry um, while we're working in other places here. I'm gonna add a little bit of light there. And when you paint in watercolor, you just wanna put it down and leave it alone. Don't go in and mess with it. Just let it move around as it sees fit. I do like to have a little bit of toilet paper in my bag too, because it's so great for skies. So I can actually twist this and dab it a little bit. And add a little highlight. So I'm going to leave that alone for now. Um, and as long as I don't touch the water up here, I can start putting in my background below. So in this photo, I've got kind of a, a nice, deep, kind of a yellow ochre, orangey background. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to put this water in but I'm not gonna to touch the blue sky with my wet brush because that'll bleed. So I'm just putting some water. It looks a little yellow because it was in my brush, but I wanna just get that water background in there. And then do the same thing, just add sort of a background to this. and let it dry. So 
So I added a little um, mixture of yellow ochre and a little bit of blue in that, and then more yellow ochre. And then I'm gonna add a little, um, maybe a little uh, raw sienna down here. It's not bleeding so much now, but I can go in and soften that edge with a brush. Okay, I'm going to let that alone for now because I want that to dry. And then I'm going to, um, I guess I just touched it one more time because I couldn't stand it. Okay, now I want to go over to the watercolor pencils and show you how I do this with watercolor pencil while that's drying. So what's really fun about watercolor pencils is that you can put all the color down at once. All right, so I'm gonna take a little uh, mustard and I think I'll just show you what that is over here as I go. So that's mustard. I'm gonna go ahead and hopefully you can see this okay. Now I'm putting my pencil in vertically because a, a great thing with watercolor pencils is you can um, show, kind of show that it's grasses by the way you, um, direction you do your pencil. So this is, these are vertical grasses. So that's a way I can indicate that there's grasses in here. And I'm gonna go ahead and put all my mustard in. And I'm gonna build some color up over this, um, a little bit back here. Now, I'm not gonna do anything with water yet because I'm gonna just build up these, these colors. This is oak, this pencil color is called oak. And I find that this is a, a great one to have. You can buy these separately at Blick, um, the colors, but oak is great for a lot of wildlife. So I can refer to these, these swatches. Oh, I wish that focused a little better. Um, here we are. So here's oak down here. And so I can actually, what's nice about swatches is I can put them next to the drawing and match the color really easy. And you can do this with watercolor too. Remember I talked about this little chart. So you can be matching color with that as well. So I think I like some baked earth there because it's so orange. So I'm gonna go ahead and put in It's fun. These are very for forgiving, these colors. Okay. Let's see what else I need in here. I need a little green. So maybe this light olive. I see this right here. I can pick up some greens in here. Might be hard to see for you, but I can see some greens in here. And I'm going to use this light olive in the trees as well. I'm going to add another color into these because I want them to be really dark. They're the darkest part of this example. And then for the sky, I think I'll put in a little, for fun, I might put in a little um, purple. Here we go. So I'm going to use this very lightly because this is pretty strong, but I can just put in a few lines of purple. You can barely see that, but you'll see when I add the water, it really gets a lot stronger. I'm going to put a little blue in here too. Not too much. All right. And I think I might put in a little bit of some yellow, just because this looks so gold down here in the bottom. 
a lot of gold. So I'm going to add some a little brighter color. So you can see that looks pretty messy. But what's so fun with this watercolor pencils is um, you can just drop in this water and blend everything right in one pass pretty much. You can see how easy that is. Um, rinse your brush and I think I'm going to add a little bit of red to these trees and you're probably like why are you going to add red to these trees well this is a dark green if I want that to be even darker I'm going to add its complementary color which is red because I want those to be really dark so I'm just put some red right over that and that's going to really make that nice and dark a little darker than it would have been if, with just the olive color and you can see a little red popping through there, but that's okay. It's not a big deal. You can see how dark that got. And then um, I'm going to go ahead and just blend the rest of this out. This is kind of a scumbling motion I'm using with the brush, which is kind of just making circles and sort of letting everything blend. And this is super quick. I would spend a little more time on this, but I just wanted you to get an idea of how to do this and what it looks like. And this is uh, how these things can be blended out over here on the side. So you can see that that is pretty quick on a way to do watercolor pencils. So with the watercolor up here, um, you really wanna make sure that this is completely dry before you do the next layer. And the way I do that is I put my hand on it like this. And if it feels cool, it means it's still wet. So I would need to wait a little longer. But I'm not going to because I don't have much more time. So I'm just going to grab my watercolors and add another layer. And it, it's pretty dry, so it won't bleed too much. But again, I'm going to take, um, I'm just going to go ahead with this green right here. It's pretty dark. And then add a little bit of, um, Maybe add a little bit of this red in here just to darken it up even more. You can see how dark that gets. And I think I'll add a little Payne's gray just to darken it even more. And then I'll go ahead and do the trees. And then um, what I would do one more time is probably wet this. And I'm doing it very lightly because it's still wet and you want to wait till it's dry, but I'm going to go ahead and go for that. Um, I'm going to add some red to this green, kind of get myself a little bit darker color. And then just add some shadows, so forth in here. So that gives you a, a, a good idea of the difference between watercolor and watercolor pencil. And they're both perfectly fine to use with nature journaling. Yeah. So um, let's see how much time we have left, about five minutes. So I'll just show you here why, how those dividers I was talking about can transfer an object to your sketchbook. Like if I was just looking at this, I would think that the width is probably the same as the height or pretty similar, but really the width is quite a bit wider than this height. And so these dividers can really help you transfer um, information. I'll just go ahead and do this right in pen to save a little time. I can find my pen. Here it is. Okay. So the way I would draw a leaf first is to draw the mid vein. And then I would draw one side. So I might do, my width is here, so I might do a couple dots showing 
where it comes in here. And again, this is going to be kind of quick. <laughs> So, so the, drawing the veins first really helps, and then you can fill in. So I'm just going to draw one side, but you can see um, how easily it helps you draw if you have those dividers, and you can get it pretty close to the way it looks. All right, so let me pop back to you, your beautiful faces. Okay, everybody, that's about an hour and a half. I don't want to keep you too long. Um, again, just to um, summarize, I'm Nancy Seiler. I teach nature journaling and so forth. And I have a lot of classes online. I'll send you the links. This will be recorded. There are links to the supplies and so forth. Um, you can get yourself a, um, a little core dot sheet for free from Golden by going to help at goldenpaints.com. That's an email, help at goldenpaints. And you want to ask for a core dot card, Q-O-R dot card. And you can tell them you took my class and um, you want that mailed to you. And internationally, just tell them you're international where you are and they'll talk with sales to get you one of those. They're free. Golden's a wonderful company. Um, a lot of times you can uh, ask them for a sample kit of some acrylics or if you need a little sample and they'll send you one for free. So just keep that in mind. They really want to, are there to help, help you artists. Um, so again, thank you so much for joining me today. If you have any other questions, you can write them down over here in the chat. Um, yeah, let me write the name of what that's called in here. Someone asked me, it's called core dot card or cards. And you want to go to help at goldenpaints.com. And I just posted that. Um, that's an email. So you, you want to go there and you can get a free dot card or a couple dot cards mailed to you. They also have a um, paint and share dot card if you're if you are familiar with the um, artist trading cards artist trading cards um, you can I think you can ask for that one too so it's called a um, paint and share I'll put that in here too or paint and share dot card and that one is artist trading cards and they're business card size pieces of watercolor paper and you can paint on those with the dot card and then um, you can post them to Instagram and just um, they have a little note on there of how to tag it if you want to share it on Instagram to the core watercolor site. So um, a lot of great options for you and um, where did I get the one with the paint gradients? Oh yeah so I, I'm glad I saw that so let me put that link up here again She's talking about, where did I get this image? Sorry, it's kind of bright. There we go. This is great. This is the one I have in my the back of my journal. Um, I'm going to put the article, the link up here. And this is the, um, the core paint gradient. So if you go to that link where it says paint gradient swatches, there's an article um, in Just Paint and it, it talks about the Core Mini, which is this little guy that I paint with that's great for journaling. And it's got the image in there that I just copied. I downloaded it, whoops, there we go. I downloaded it and printed it out on a P, uh, like a photograph and then laminated it. And so I use this a lot in my journal to um, find the right color while I'm out in the field. So that's a wonderful thing to have. Um, how long do, can one use the paint? No, it's, 
indefinite. That paint does not expire. The paint lasts forever. It's wonderful. It's being used in art conservation. So we know that it's been tested and is very stable and long lasting. Core paints are some of the uh, brightest pigments you can buy in the market because of the, the binder is clear. It's completely clear. It's not yellowed like uh, gum arabic would be or honey. So um, anyway, it's 331. So I'm going to sign off. You can, again, you can email me. Um, it's great to see you all. Thank you for joining me. It's, re it's just really been fun. Thank so you, I look forward to hopefully seeing you next Sunday. Um, I also have one more thing. I do have a virtual lecture demo coming up Wednesday that's free as well. And you can sign up for that at Eventbrite. It's on Wednesday the 16th. And I'm gonna be going over um, different surfaces for watercolor. So you can use them within your nature journal. You can put the acrylic surface in your nature journal and then um, paint on that, let it dry and then paint on a textured surface or get some a lot of texture, say you're doing a landscape. So um, take a look at that link at Eventbrite. It's the one right after today. It's on Wednesday. And there's time to sign up for that. You will get, um, at the end of that lecture demo, you'll have the opportunity to fill out a short survey, which will go to Golden Artist, Artist Colors, and you'll get a box of free samples from Golden. So it's a great opportunity to, to come to my lecture demo, learn about some different surfaces, learn about acrylic paints and gels and mediums. It lasts about an hour and a half. And um, then you'll get also some free samples at the end. So some free opportunities, okay? Thank you all. I really appreciate you being here with me today. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye.